the last leg of our top end trip, we're heading southwest from Kakadu towards Pine Creek to look for hooded parrot, a rare species with a very restricted range, found only in the savannah woodlands of the top end, west of the Gulf of Carpentaria, and dotted with the termite mounds in which the parrots nest. Nearby Copperfield Dam is a good early morning drinking spot. A couple of large pale-eyed Raja shell duck found mainly in Northern Australia, as is the spectacular red-winged parrot. Common in wooded habitats across the top end, Paperbark flycatcher is the smaller relative of restless flycatcher, which occurs in the southeast regions of Australia. A flock of cockatiels has come in to drink. They're near the northern limit of their distribution here, as they prefer dry habitats. Gregarious and noisy in flight, they settle for only the briefest moment to drink. The sexes are distinguished by the male's prominent orange cheek patch. Yes, our first glimpse of hooded parrot in typical upright perching posture, a male with a black hood, usually in family groups consisting of several pairs plus juveniles. This party has come in for early morning bathing and drinking, giving us glorious views. The black-capped males are a beautiful turquoise green below with a large golden patch on the shoulder, while the females and juveniles are a duller grass green. They're one of only two termite mound nesting parrots in Australia, the other being the very similar golden-shouldered parrot found only on Cape York Peninsula. We're delighted to see Northern Rosella again, only our second sighting for the trip of this sparsely spread, colourful species. Hooded parrots were once described as a race of golden-shouldered parrot because of their very similar plumage and breeding habits. However, these two species are now widely separated on different sides of the gulf. The main plumage difference is the smaller blackish cap of the male. The golden-shouldered is even more restricted in range, found only in one area of Cape York, and is endangered due to habitat loss and increased predation. Hooded parrots are mainly ground feeders on seeds in dry open woodland and are partial to burnt areas. Fantastic. Savannah woodlands are the most widespread habitat in the top end and the surrounds of the dam hold many other species. A small flock of white-breasted wood swallow, the largest wood swallow with an extensive range over North and East Australia. They prefer to be near water and to cuddle together when perching. Another widespread species, Pied Butcher Bird. Smallest of Australia's 10 fairy wren species, the red-backed is also the only one with no blue colour in its plumage. It's found in the grassy understory in northern and eastern Australia. Adult males in breeding plumage are sooty black with a crimson back, while females and juveniles are brown, as are non-breeding males. This bird is a male in eclipse plumage. Well-watered woodland and tall open forest with cleared areas of scattered grass and herbs is ideal habitat for partridge pigeon. They avoid damp areas. They're superbly camouflaged until they stray onto a clear path when they run ahead when spotted, preferring to stay on the ground, but eventually taking off with clattering wings. They're restricted to the tropics, and like hooded and golden-shouldered parrots, they form a species pair with squatter pigeon on the western side of the gulf. However, squatter pigeon has a far more extensive range down the east coast. We're leaving Pine Creek, heading south to Catherine. I'm particularly excited, as this is taking us into finch country, my favourite birds. On the way, we're turning off to Edith Falls, in the hope of finding small pools of water where birds will come in to drink. 
It's early morning, dry and very, very hot, but this is the spot. We wait, blanketed in stifling heat, hardly daring to move, as the finches fly down from their perches. Fantastic! A flock of thirsty Gordians are suddenly scattered in front of us, hopping down to take their turn at the water's edge. What a thrilling sight! They're the most brilliantly coloured Australian finch. Unusually, they're polymorphic, occurring in three different head colours. Black is the commonest, with about a quarter having red heads, plus a rare yellow-headed form. The breasts are vibrant purple, contrasting with golden bellies, and the tail feathers are a beautiful blue. The females share the same colouring, but more muted. The immatures are pale below, with a greenish olive back wings and tail. Many of these birds are in various stages of molt. Like other finches, they need to be near a water source, and especially in this extreme heat, they need to drink swiftly and often. They drink by the suck and tilt technique, rather than the more usual sip and tilt of other bush birds, sucking water into their beaks, thus collecting a much greater amount and allowing them to drink more quickly. Their numbers and range have been greatly depleted in recent times, and they are now listed as endangered. This is due to the effects of grazing, destruction of habitat for mining, uncontrolled fires, and infestation from the air sac mite. Added to these is that, over many years, their sheer beauty has been their downfall through constant illegal trapping. They're the only Australian grass finch to nest in small tree cavities, which may be shared by several pairs. They form strong pair bonds like most grass finches. Any nest lining is cursory, with only a few grasses or feathers, if anything. Two or three broods may be raised in a season. During breeding, their diet is mainly insectivirus, while at other times they're seed eaters. Just checking you're not missing this, Greg. And just as suddenly they're gone, but thirsty birds are not. More finches, masked finch with a yellow beak and the elegant long-tailed finch. The pandanus too is alive with flashes of vivid red, crimson finches, largest, most insectivirus and least sociable of the grass finches. The larger peaceful and smaller diamond dove approach together. Pigeons and doves are the only birds who can drink without raising their heads to swallow, much like using a straw. Dwarfing the finches is great bower bird. It's all in together for desperately thirsty birds. Honey eaters are next using another drinking technique, tongue drinking. They dip the tips of their beaks in the water and use their tongue bristles to collect fluid into the beak before quickly swallowing the water. Only small amounts of water can be gleaned this way, which necessitates returning to water for a quick drink at regular intervals. Last to appear is the cute little owl-faced, double-barred finch. We're pretty thirsty ourselves by now, and it's time to continue to Edith Falls, watched balefully by a brown goshawk who has been guarding his chick and keeping an eye on the banquet of small birds spread out below. This is a spectacular swimming hole, particularly inviting on such a hot day. Stunningly vivid red-collared lorikeets are the top-end equivalent of the equally common and colourful rainbow lorikeet, and just as noisy and gregarious. Surely vying with grey honeyeater for the title of most nondescript Aussie honeyeater is dusky honeyeater. 
Lemon-bellied flycatcher builds the smallest nest of any Australian bird. Jumping about in the branches, a family of grey-crowned babblers is constantly on the move, gleaning and chattering. Australia's largest babbler, it has the widest distribution, but numbers are declining in the southeast. Announcing himself with his usual raucous call, Great Bowerbird enters his bower to make some minor, well-considered adjustments to the decor, which will hopefully improve its amorous ambience. But his purple crest is not on display, so maybe he's not totally confident yet of the effect. Heading further south on the Stuart Highway, we cross the Catherine River, a tributary of the Daly River. The town itself has suffered two disastrous floods in the past 25 years. Nearby Nitmilluk National Park contains 13 spectacular sandstone gorges and plenty of wildlife. Apostle birds are mainly ground feeders, always in groups, breeding units of around 10 birds. Agile wallaby is the most common wallaby in Northern Australia and prefers to be always near water. A noisy camp of little red flying foxes, smallest of the family and unlike other species in feeding mainly on nectar and hanging in clumps. In the extreme heat, this dollar bird is using gaping as a method of cooling. An active forager, Arafura fantail, is closely related to Rufus fantail, but is found only in northern Australia along the coast and inland rivers, and has a longer tail with white tips. Entering his impressive avenue bower, this great bower bird is giving us just a glimpse of his pink crest, which would be fully found out if only we were a female bower bird. Blue-winged kookaburras are perched above. The female with a barred brown tail, distinguishing her from the blue-tailed male. We're back at the campground. I'm getting swooped. It's the black-faced wood swallow. I can see why its fledgling is clinging to the trunk over there. It's even more fiercely hot and the birds are making the most of any opportunity of water. As usual, babblers make it a family affair. Yellow oriole, Acca green oriole, has a striped yellow chest and belly, distinguishing it from olive-backed oriole with striped creamy white underparts. The very adaptable Australasian fig bird is one of the commonest birds of the top end. That tenacious fledgling with the attentive parent is still clinging on. Rufous-throated honeyeater is widespread across northern tropical Australia. The omnivorous blue-faced honeyeater is one of the largest of Australia's extensive honeyeater family. The adult has a blue skin patch around the eye, while the juvenile is green. These birds are making the most of any moisture left in fallen mangoes, while the steadfast wood swallow is keeping its tough little chick alive. It's still clinging there next morning, as we head south and turn east along the Arnhem Highway and seemingly endless savannah, we have to wade in to find the birds. We've heard the melodious far-carrying cry of black-chinned honeyeater, not a common bird, and the northern race, golden-backed, is particularly beautiful 
so we're keen to get close views. It differs from the southern race in having a golden rather than olive back and a green eye instead of blue, offset by its distinctive black cap. What a gorgeous bird. Time to pause and rehydrate, watched by brown falcon. But soon the ringing, persistent call of a tree creeper has us searching the trees again. The only tree creeper in this habitat is black-tailed tree creeper, the largest and darkest of the six Australian tree creepers. Thankfully, these birds like to keep in touch, which makes it just possible to locate them among the vastness of this open eucalypt forest. They glide down from the canopy of one tree, landing on the trunk of another and foraging. And now we can hear another bark forager, varied satella, pileate the black-capped race. This is as far south as we're going this trip, but on a previous trip, we heard there was a nesting red goshawk further south at Mataranka and seized the opportunity to see this rarest of Australian raptors. The size of a little eagle, it specializes in taking birds, gliding possums and bats in mid-air, as well as arboreal lizards and snakes. Sadly, habitat clearance and fragmentation particularly of tall riparian forests, plus inappropriate fire regimes leading to wildfires, has drastically reduced the numbers of this magnificent raptor, and it has become critically endangered in its southerly former habitat, barely hanging on in the north. From Catherine, we're taking the Victoria River Highway, heading southwest to Victoria River Crossing. This is amazing country and a climb up the nearest sandstone escarpment gives wonderful views over the river and roadhouse. But we're keen to get down by the river among the pandanus and cane grass to find one of our most wanted species, purple crowned fairy wren. The largest of the fairy wrens and arguably the most beautiful of this most exquisite group of birds, it occurs very locally in vegetation fringing permanent rivers, much of which has been degraded by cattle grazing and burning. Another long walk and climb up a sandstone escarpment in search of white-quilled rock pigeon, close relative of the very similar chestnut-quilled rock pigeon of Arnhem Land. Both live on sandstone escarpments where they breed and even drink in the deep rock crevices. But even the thrill of finding our coveted bird after an arduous climb comes second to the stunning view of this magical country. Heading farther west towards Timber Creek, we're turning off to explore the unsealed, whimsically named Buchanan Highway this is finch country and we're looking for puddles, but first we spot little wood swallow. Then bingo, water plus finches, and we're excited to see a species we haven't seen before, Picturella mannequin. A nomadic species following the rains and well adapted to the arid grassy plains of the north, it uses the sip and tilt drinking technique, but far more rapidly than most birds, minimising time spent at the waterhole. Mainly a ground feeder, it's more insectivorous than most grass finches and far more beautiful than we had imagined. In typical upright pose on a rock the same colour as its wings is the charismatic spinifex pigeon, an unmistakable emblem of the harsh arid interior in which it has evolved. Far more stately in retreat and much larger is Australian bustard, which can grow to two metres. We've arrived at Timber Creek in late afternoon, so we're heading straight out to a high point overlooking the river, hoping for finches to fly in for their evening drink. Galahs are wheeling about in alternate bursts of pink and grey. And we're in luck. Finches have arrived and are swaying about on the grass stems in front of us. The flock is predominantly chestnut-breasted mannequins, a widespread and very sociable species but we think we've spotted the one finch we have yet to see. Yes, it's definitely yellow-rumped mannequin, a species that interbreeds with chestnut-breasted. 
And just to emphasise we're in finch heaven, a flock of exquisite starfinches has arrived, looking ethereal in the last rays of sunshine. Leaving Timber Creek next morning, we stop for another look over the Victoria River. To South Aussies, these mighty northern rivers are hugely impressive. And we've spotted yellow-tinted honeyeater, a blossom nomad of northern Australia. Back on the highway, driving southwest, bulging boab trees indicate that we're even farther into the Kimberley and nearing the border with Western Australia. Just off the highway is Keep River National Park, part of the Keep River important bird area for its conservation value to Gordian finches. There are a number of different habitats, striking sandstone formations and water sources. There's the call of paperbark flycatcher. And a couple of raptors are perched overlooking the river. The unmistakable calls of red-tailed black cockatoo, which occurs widely over the tropical north. We've crossed the border into Western Australia over the Ord River to Kununurra and our lakeside cabin. Greg has gone to look for birds, but right beside our cabin, I've spotted a pair of buff-sided robins sitting confidingly on a stump flicking their tails. Now that's easy birding for an uncommon quiet bird, which is often in inaccessible habitat. There are plenty of spots with seeding grass around Kununurra to continue to find finches. Star finches prefer to feed on grass stems. With vivid crimson faces and white breast spots, they're aptly named. The female has slightly less red on her face and juveniles are a dull olive brown. We've spotted a covey of brown quail in typical upright posture, scurrying down the path and peering around, but they don't seem to have spotted us. Whoops, they have now. We love this close northern relative of our familiar meadow argus of the south, such a velvety blue. This morning we're visiting Lake Argyll, a freshwater lake with a greater water volume than Sydney Harbour, created by damming the mighty Ord River. On a previous trip, we took a boat trip out to an island to search for yellow chat, a rare localised species that is hard to find, as its habitats are remote, swampy and often quite desolate, making access difficult. The male has a bright yellow head and underparts with a black crescent mark on its breast and seems to glow golden in its drab environment. Females have a grey face with paler yellow underparts and juveniles are an even paler version of the female. We drive north to Wyndham through thick smoke from a wildfire. This is a common occurrence in the top end and it's interesting to note black kites and other raptors cruising the fire front to snatch up fleeing creatures driven out of hiding. Many observations have been made of these raptors grabbing up a smouldering stick and dropping it in a fresh patch of grass some distance away, both recently by firefighters and by Aboriginals, whose knowledge, of course, goes back for millennia. We're detouring to visit Marglu Billabong, in Parry Lagoon's Nature Reserve, an important water bird feeding and breeding area. It's also a stopover for migratory waders from the Northern Hemisphere and has a great boardwalk over the water to enable close views.
At the end of the Great Northern Highway and of our top end trip is the historic port town of Wyndham. And what better place to end the trip than among Gordian finches? For other affincionados, here are the remaining Australian grass finches not seen in our top end series. Plum-headed finch is found in eastern Australia on grassy slopes west of the Great Dividing Range, foraging mainly on seeds like most finches. The only Australian finch found in tropical rainforest, blue-faced parrot finch is a scarce localised resident of far northeast Queensland. Shy and elusive, it shelters in dense vegetation on the periphery of grassy clearings. The introduced nutmeg mannequin or spice finch ranges along the eastern seaboard. Black-throated finch is a finch of eastern tropical savannas whose range is severely contracting northwards as its habitat is destroyed. Seen around the waterholes of central Australia, painted finch or firetail inhabits rocky spinifex covered hills and ranges and is superbly adapted to this harsh, arid environment. Zebra finch is common and widespread across large areas of Australia, being an eruptive breeder in suitable conditions with available water. Red-browed finch is another firetail found commonly down the east coast where seeding grass proliferates. The quiet and unobtrusive red-eared firetail is very localised to the southwest coast of Western Australia. Beautiful firetail is very similar in appearance and habits, but has a wider distribution around coastal southeast Australia and is also the only finch in Tasmania. Competing for most dazzling of this fascinating family, diamond firetail occupies drier, more inland forests and open grassy woodlands of the southeast. That concludes our four part series on birding the top end of Australia an exciting birding adventure. We hope you've enjoyed the journey with us.